Hi, my name's Gavin and uh, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the uh, robots that you have that you'll be using in your class. And the first one I'm going to uh, introduce you to is our big orange robot. This is the IRB 1400. Now this is an 8 kilo robot. In other words, it will lift 8 kilos of payload consistently. Um, and as we would have discussed, uh, robotics in uh, production engineering is all about consistency of product. Basically, actually, we had to program this and uh, it carry out its duties all the time. So the maximum load that it will do is 8 kilos, which is a fair bit of weight anyway. But she's only a baby robot, but certainly it'll be the robot of choice that you'll be programming whilst you're with us. So I'm going to explain a couple of key features about the robot. This particular robot is an articulated robot. That means that it's got six degrees of movement. Uh, this is a six-axis robot, so it's got six joints. Starting at the base, we have one joint, two joints, three joints, four joints, five joints, six joints. Now, six joints of movement will give it a vast range of movement capability. It's not the preferred choice of robots for everything that you do, but you will see articulated robots very generally uh, throughout the industry. Some of the other key features are, obviously, this one's orange. Uh, orange, orange robots in front of the production line or high colour robots is to alert people of their presence. And it's also corporate colours of ABB. At the front end of here, we have an uh, end effector. So we have the wrist down here and we have the end effector. Now, an end effector is basically the tool that is at the end of the robot. And in this case, we have two end effectors. We have a shunk or gripper. Okay, and at the side, we have a suction cup, which will allow us to actually pick up these cans through vacuum. Okay, and that is part of the program that you're going to be doing uh, in your program. We're going to be picking up cans over here from the conveyor belt and uh, placing them onto the table. In addition to that, down here, we also have a little activity uh, where we'd be using the gripper to pick up the items on here. Now... These actual uh, end effectors are driven by pneumatics, that's compressed air, fluid power, and as you can see, it has a range of uh, cables coming to the end off to a compressor for there. Now, all these items are controlled by the robot. In other words, the robot can tell when we want to put on the uh, air to work the, the uh, grippers and also to work the uh, vacuum cup as well. And that's some of the programming you're going to be doing on this uh, on this course. Also, the robot has a, a number of external sensors that will allow it to turn the conveyor belt on and off. So, uh, you're not only that, but there are sensors on that conveyor belt that will detect when a part has arrived. It will tell the robot, and the robot will go and pick that part up and put it into a place that you've told it to put into. So, there's a lot of intelligent controls going on between robot and external functionality. Now, how do we program the robot? Well, the main pro way we program the robot is with this. This is the teach pendant, okay? It's a touch screen environment where we put our code, okay? I'll just get over there, there we go, hello. Uh, touch screen environment where we put our code. It also has a hand controller, just like a joystick, to move the robot around manually. It has a number of safety functions to it, so we have a, uh, a safety button on here, but it also to operate the robot, we must place our hand in in a special way, and you'll be doing this in class, and we must activate it. There's a switch on the end here that as we press this in, there's a clunk which tells us we've got control of the robot, and I can now move the robot up and down. Let's have a go there, and she goes down, and you can actually keep control of the robot as she's going up there. Look at that. And the big orange is on the move. And back over this way. Now, at all times when you're programming robot, you must have control of the robot. It's a safety feature. The safety feature with that is, if I wasn't in control of the robot, okay, and I let go of it and dropped it, the robot would stop. Two, two, two people, types of people start to panic. Those that see the robot coming towards them and go, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, and squeeze too hard, which will stop the robot, or they will let go and run out the cell screaming, okay? That would stop the robot also, okay? Uh, but that is in the production. But the robot's not moving very quickly anyway, uh, whilst you're, uh, oops, uh, whilst you're actually programming it. So you've no real danger. But if you did take your eye off the wall, because there are some sharp bits and pieces on the robot, and even at the slow speed, that is, you don't want to get hit by it. Okay? 
the big area that we're in. You often see this referred to as this is the robot cell. Now, I haven't, let's see if we can just come over here a little bit. You can see the cage, all right, and the door and everything like that. This has got a, a, a door that if when we open the door, there is a sensor up here that detects the door opening and that will stop the robot also. Okay, but we can close the door and then we can come back to the robot. Just press a couple of buttons on the, can you remember, teach pendant, okay, and we can restart the robot up again. So, once again, quick summary, IRB 1400, eight kilo robot. Can you remember how many axes? Correct, six axis robot, six degrees of movement. Okay, and end effector, what's an end effector? That's right, it's the tool at the end that holds the different tool bits and pieces that we can in. So we've got two end effectors, which are they? Anybody at the back? Okay, a vacuum cup and a gripper. Okay, so we've got two end effectors on this particular robot. We wouldn't normally see that in industry, you normally have one end effector that does one job, but we're in education and we want it to do multiple things. Anyway, I think we've pretty much done all that. So until next time, thank you very much.